Hi, I'm Liz Tassone. I'm volunteer host of Caring Matters, the Caregivers Assistance Network podcast. And I'm here today by myself to give you some New Year's resolutions. Uh, I came up with some Caregivers New Year's resolutions that I'm hoping you can use in this new year to kind of uh, begin anew. As we all do, we always make these big lists of, of New Year's resolutions and let's see how we do by the end of the year. But it's always a good place to start, you know, that we start out with, with great ideals and how we begin the new year. So I've come up with 10 New Year's resolutions that we can begin the new year with. My first one is meditate every day. And I put this in here because slowing down and giving ourselves stillness and space for our divine connection is just a wonderful um, entry point into the day or it can be the thing you do at the end of the day, a nice time to be still and relax and, and reflect. But for me, meditation means actually trying to get the thoughts out of my head and actually spending some time uh, concentrating on my breath, sitting up, sitting still, and just being present to my breath and letting what I feel, the time for the divine to enter in uh, when I can let go of some of my thoughts. There's a new app on, for those of you who have an iPhone or one of those eye touch pads or whatever, where you can get this app called Insight Timer. It begins with like a chime. You can set it for any amount of time and you can put that on your phone or your iPad and you can actually have a, a timer that times you and ends your meditation with, and begins your meditation with the sound of a chime. So that might be something you look into. If not, to just set your own cell phone or something for 10 minutes if you're afraid that the time will get away from you if you sit too long. So just try that and just try to set your timer and begin with maybe just five minutes a day to have this quiet time where you sit and concentrate on your breath. Okay, so that's the first thing, is just try to spend some time meditating every day. Um, the second thing I thought of as a New Year's resolution for caregivers is to make a list of your helpers. Make a list of all those people who have said to you through the years, oh, give me a call if you need something, but they're not real specific. Well, start thinking about those people, your sons, your daughters, your nieces and nephews, your friends, your neighbors, all those people who have offered help through the years. And really think about all those people that have made the offer and now just write down their names, just write down their names, all these people who through the years, your contacts that have, have offered help through the years. And, and chances are you've offered them help through the years as well. You've probably been one of the first people on your list. Caregivers usually are. They're the kind of, people's, kind of people who are always offering help to others and let people help you as well. You've probably been one of the first to step up for others. And sometimes we need to ask help ourselves. So just make a list of those people in your life that have offered help. The second list if you have time. I know this is one more thing people are, caregivers have enough to do and here I'm telling you more things to do, but I'm hoping these things will help you. Um, make a list of the things as a caregiver that you need help with. Uh, maybe occasionally you just really appreciate a meal that's home cooked, or maybe you'd appreciate someone else driving your loved one to the store or to the doctor's appointment or the store or something. Just make a list of things that would make your life easier if you had a little help with them. Maybe it's writing checks. Maybe it's doing research on the internet for a particular product. But just make a list of, of things you would really appreciate help with. So now the third thing you're going to do is you've got this list of helpers and now you've got a list of things you need help with and spend some time seeing where those two lists meet. Who could help you with this particular task? Who of these people you've listed might be able to drive your loved one to the, to the doctor for you, or stop at the store for you, or even provide a meal? People love to help people. That's how we get fed, is by helping others. So when you ask for help, you're actually helping to make someone else's day because we get fed by helping others. So don't be shy about asking for help. People appreciate when you make that phone call or actually take them up on offers of help. The fifth thing I've got is get organized with your loved one's medical records. And maybe you've already done this, I hope you have. But it's really important to just get a simple folder and start keeping track of all the doctors uh, that your loved one sees, a list of the doctors, a list of the medications. 
and the medications would include both the prescription drugs and the um, over-the-counter drugs or even vitamins or supplements something that you're gonna have this in one space so that if you have a quick uh, emergency need to the doctor or something you've got everything in one place I know somebody who keeps one of those folders uh, in the car and one with them you know in the house and they've got duplicates just so that if they're out and they need this information it's available to them in the trunk of their car whenever they need it so just get organized I think when we get organized when we write things down we feel a little more on top of our game and so that will help you so just get a couple simple folders and just start getting organized and you can also use one of the pockets to begin to keep receipts and so on um, things from the doctor not prescriptions per se because you usually turn those in but you know receipts from the doctor's office and so on so just start to get yourself a little bit organized it doesn't have to be super sophisticated but if you're one of those type of people that'd be great too if you've if you've got a real knack for organization but you can also keep it very simple and just keep keep a couple folders with this information it'll help you a lot I think the sixth thing I wrote down is to consider a family meeting this isn't something you have to do alone there's 65 million caregivers in the United States there's a lot of people doing this work but you also have family members who have probably offered help or who want to be part of this loved one's care and so if you can all get on the same page with a with a family meeting and if it's possible and appropriate to bring your loved one to that meeting as well and and be very direct in what do you need and and how can we help you and those kind of family meetings while at times can be uncomfortable can also be, be very life-giving and they can see the level of care that you have and concern for them that you have and if if you think having a family meeting could be um, full attention and you want to bring in um, a professional into that family meeting there are people geriatric care managers and social workers who have those skills in leading family meetings that could probably help you on that so don't be shy about bringing someone else in that has experience in leading those types of uh, family meetings that can help you get your efforts really um, coordinated with others who are on the same team who also care about your loved one uh, the seventh thing is use community resources now you're listening to this podcast so you're already doing one thing which is listening to community resources catholic charities and the caregivers assistance network is one of those community resources here in cincinnati that can help you and this webcast goes out throughout the world so you don't have to be in cincinnati to be listening to this and to get support through this but there's also in your own community and in the the web community or the internet community there are so many resources um, if you just google search uh, care, the word caregiver you're going to get tons of information that can help you or if your loved one has a specific disease you can Google search that specific disease and get a lot of information that can help you so the the internet is full of information and if you have someone out of town that wants to help and be on your caregiving team that might be something they could do for you is re do some research uh, on the internet for you about the diseases or about community resources because that's something you don't have to be in the community to do you can just google search your your um, your town and the information you need and somebody can come up with that for you um, the eighth thing I don't know this may be a little indulgent but if you can treat yourself to someone to clean your house every once in a while it's a big treat it's a luxury but it's a real lift too so when you are so busy that you have gotten behind on that if you can sometimes splurge and get yourself a house cleaner uh, just occasionally or once in a while or maybe just one time this year uh, I think that's a real treat for a caregiver the um, the last thing I want to say is give yourself a break uh, take a break occasionally we talked about meditation as our first thing on your caregivers New Year's resolution but there's also ways to take a break um, just a couple days away or even one day away and I was at a retreat center recently and this nun who lives on this beautiful campus here in Cincinnati said 
you know, tell your group that they can come here for just a day if they'd like and just be part of uh, just rent a room for a day and meals are included and it's a way to get away, maybe one or two days. Just treat yourself to a little day away, away from even the noise and hustle and bustle. And sometimes we come home from vacations exhausted because we've tried to fit so much in. But a retreat center is different. There's not a lot going on and so you have time to truly relax, put your feet up, uh, pray, get in touch with yourself, um, and truly rest. So consider that. So from the Caregivers Assistance Network, I want to say Happy New Year. And I want to thank our sponsors who are part of, uh, listed on this webpage who, for their support in supporting this podcast. We really appreciate them. And uh, have a wonderful, lovely new year.